you, my friend. I want to go to Neil uh, Crabtree right now. He's an uncanny read of these markets, a former Keystone Pipeline worker. Neil, good to have you back. One of the ideas uh, that, that doesn't seem too crazy, at least to me, is just to, you know, beef up production here, heaven forbid. But I, I, I'm, I'm wondering on what you make of some of these ideas they're tossing out right now, temporary tax holiday, that sort of thing. What do you think? I mean, we just passed, what, a two and a half trillion dollar infrastructure bill, and, you know, it was goes to fix roads and bridges. So uh, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to cut the one source of funding, you know, with the gas tax. But I, I know the Americans public is hurting and they would probably love that break. But it, it seems like every option is being looked at except for putting Americans back to work, you know, uh, getting rid of some of these regulations and uh, letting us, you know, not just here in America, but when I, I talk about energy independence, I like to, you know, talk about North American energy independence. Uh, Canada is a big partner with us. And if we can uh, grab some of that global market share, it will help, you know, with these price fluctuations when things uh, aren't going so well in other countries. You know, as a former Keystone Pipeline worker, it's got to bug you, Neil, when they say, well, it made no difference uh, cutting off uh, Keystone when it was years away from, from offering all the oil that the markets had been anticipating uh, had zero effect. My, my argument has always been uh, it's about supply and demand, and that includes future supply and future demand. And, and when the market saw that cut off, it immediately read into that a reason to think, all right, maybe supply is going to be limited and bid up the prices. It was almost to the very day that was announced by the president on his first day in office that that, that ball started rolling. Right. You know, when you bring that kind of attitude in the White House, and especially with some of the rhetoric leading up, you know, to the election with putting, you know, energy company CEOs in jail. Uh, once you're elected president in the United States, those words carry weight. So, you know, the attitude in the oil and gas industry was uh, hesitant to develop anymore. But as far as that Keystone Pipeline goes, you know, the White House is putting out that it wouldn't have had any effect, that it's not an oil field, it's just a transportation mode. But uh, there, the pipeline capacity coming out of Canada right now is uh, it's tied up. It's 100 percent being used. That Keystone Pipeline would have looked pretty good about right now because uh, it's costing about $15 a barrel to uh, bring that uh, oil in by train, and that price is going to keep rising. So where is that oil going, largely from Alberta? Uh, mostly, you know, we're, our, we're still set up like we were back in the 70s, you know. Most of our refineries are on the Gulf Coast because we imported a lot of our oil, right, and right. we haven't built any major refineries in this country since the 70s. We've built a few smaller ones, so most of it has to be transported down uh, to the Gulf Coast. Well put. Um, you know what you speak. Neil Crabtree, the former Keystone Pipeline worker.